So I think we can all agree that data science is probably the fastest growing field of this decade. Because of that, a lot of people have taken an interest into learning data science. And obviously, there's a ton of different ways you can do this. You can take the traditional route by going to a university. You could also go the free route by self-learning through resources like YouTube, Google research articles, and stuff like that. Or you could do what I did and kind of take the middle ground approach by utilizing stuff like courses and certification. Now, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Ranesh and I'm a data scientist currently working at a tech startup. My data science journey involved a combination of a four-year degree program, a lot of self-learning on YouTube, and over a dozen courses and certifications. However, I personally found that courses and certifications help direct my growth and understanding of data science concepts the best. So in this video, we're gonna dive into some of the best certifications that you can take to learn data science. So if you don't already know what data science is, it's essentially a combination of computer science, statistics, mathematics, and also business. It's a pretty broad field, so there's a lot of subsets within it like data engineering, data analytics, business intelligence, machine learning, and more. Because of that, it's extremely important to have a strong foundation when it comes to learning data science. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume that you're a complete beginner with no previous experience whatsoever. Personally, I started with the Google Data Analytics certification on Coursera. At the time, I found that it provided the best foundation and covered a broad set of tools like SQL, Google Sheets, R, and Tableau. It also went over some basic statistical concepts that I needed to know. Personally, I love that it provided a structured workflow that I could follow when trying to solve similar data problems. In fact, I still use a variation of that workflow to this day as a data scientist. I personally learn best through applications, so I found that the practical projects and also case studies that they had was super helpful. And it wasn't all technical. They covered topics like data quality, data integrity, and also data ethics too, which is super important, especially when it comes to real world data. The only cons that I can think of for this course is that they went with R over Python. I personally prefer Python just because I think it's more practical when it comes to implementation. I know R is more heavily used in the research world, but I think when it comes to the tech world specifically, Python is just a more obvious choice. Some alternative courses that I think are worth noting are the IBM Data Analyst and also Meta Data Analyst course, both on Coursera. The IBM one has a decent tool stack covering Python, Excel, Congos, and SQL, but I prefer the Meta one just because it covers Python, SQL, Google Sheets, and also Tableau, which I just think is a better tool stack. They also cover a couple of relational database concepts, which is definitely helpful. Once you complete the stage, you should have the fundamentals of data down, and you should also be able to get your hands dirty with some projects. Overall, in present day, I still think I would go with the Google Data Analytics certification just because I think it covers a very good foundation in data analytics and also data science. Plus, it has a really good workflow, which I think many people still use. I recommend completing both of the Capstan projects if you do choose to go with the Google Data Analytics certification, but if you still feel like you need more practice to grasp some of the concepts you learn, I recommend checking out Kaggle or GitHub to do some projects that might just help you solidify the concepts you learned. Essentially, at this stage, all you're trying to do is just understand what the field of data is like, how to collect, clean, process, and analyze that data using code, and also how to share your findings through stories and visualizations. And after that, hopefully you're ready to dip your toes into some advanced analytics or data science concepts. Now, I personally took the machine learning specialization course by Andrew Ng at Stanford University. I found that it covered a broad variety of machine machine learning concepts and even introduced some deep learning concepts like neural networks. I had some experience with traditional machine learning through classwork, but the way Andrew Ng thought supervised and unsupervised machine learning was just perfect for me. The hands-on labs definitely helped me visualize and understand the math and theory that was going on. Personally, I found it pretty difficult to understand certain concepts like gradient descent, bagging versus boosting, or even neural networks, but I found that his teaching really gave me a lot of clarity. I did look into the advanced Google Data Analytics certification and also IBM's Data Science one, but I just felt like there was a lot of over overlap with content that I already knew. I know the Google Advanced Data Analytics course covers stuff like probability distribution, hypothesis testing, introduction to Python and data science, even some linear regression. For the most part, I was already familiar and comfortable with these concepts and I just wanted to dive deeper into machine learning. They also covered stuff like A-B testing and resampling data, but I found that those concepts were already covered during my four-year degree program. However, I do have a couple of friends who did not take a four-year degree program in data science and they definitely did find these concepts super helpful. I found that the IBM Data Science course just had a lot of overlap from the IBM Data Analyst certification and they were also very focused on data engineering, not so much on machine learning and data science. They cover stuff like version control with Git, an introduction to Python, DS workflows, API integrations, and stuff like that. To me, these concepts were not really as important just because I had a background in them already and the machine learning thought in this course was pretty high level. So like I said before, I took the machine learning specialization by Andrew Ng, which was pretty good at explaining theory and complex topics in machine learning. However, I did feel like there wasn't enough practical projects or case studies that I could work on. 
So because of that, I decided to work on a bunch of different projects after completing the certification just to reinforce my skills. The goal at this stage was to get much deeper into statistics, mathematics, and machine learning. You'll want to explore statistical tests like hypothesis testing with t-tests, ANOVAs, chi-squared, or even A-B tests, or maybe something more complicated like supervised or unsupervised machine learning. I strongly recommend working on regression or classification problems through projects with data sets that you can find on Kaggle or GitHub. This is the crux of becoming a data scientist, so hopefully with projects like this, you're able to figure out if you actually like predictive modeling or not. One of the projects worked out pretty well and I wanted to productionize it, so I looked into machine learning operations on Coursera and I found two certifications that were pretty good. It was between Duke's MLOps course or Deep Learning's Machine Learning in Production and I decided to go with the latter. In that course, I learned about the machine learning lifecycle and how production data might differ from historical data and what that means for training a model. And of course, all of this helped me productionize and deploy my first model. At this point, we're getting pretty deep into things and I wanted to get exposure into deep learning. So I decided to take the deep learning specialization by Andrew Ng and also Stanford University. Some of these concepts were very foreign to me and difficult to grasp, but through quizzes and hands-on labs, I was able to better understand them. Honestly, for the most part, traditional ML had a higher demand for my company's needs, but it was very important to me to understand my options in case these problems arise. Now, at this point, I was pretty comfortable and confident with my ability to work on end-to-end -end machine learning or data science projects, starting from data mining or data collection, all the way to advanced analytics and deployment. I didn't really need to take any data engineering courses or certifications just because I had the unfair advantage of having a mentor who was a data engineer. He taught me pretty much everything I needed to know about data engineering to be a data scientist in about six months, but I do know not everyone has that unfair advantage, so these days when I do mentor people, I tend to recommend these three courses. Personally, if you want to get a deep understanding of data engineering, I think the IBM data engineering course will get you the best bang for your buck. You go through a pretty thorough introduction to data engineering, covering stuff like ELTs and ETLs, relationship database management systems, API integrations, and at the end, they give you a capstone project where you can apply all the skills that you've learned. I also like how they focus on big data problems and how to use advanced SQL for optimization. However, if you need a shorter course that just focuses on AWS, the deep learning data engineering course is probably a better option for you. The goal here is to understand how data is extracted from sources like CRM tools, production databases, or even advertising platforms, and how you can plumb that data into a more meaningful format for analysis later on. Learning all about the ETL or ELT and understanding their differences will help you make a better decision when it comes to optimizing what specific workflow works for your company or works for you. And obviously, you will also learn how to optimize storage to save cost. So to summarize, my roadmap started with the Google Data Analytics Certification, then the ML Specialization 1-2, along with the Machine Learning in Production and Deep Learning Specialization Certifications at the end. However, depending on your skill set and what your goals are, you might just find that a different combination of certifications or courses might just work best for you. I think that the Metadata Analyst and the IBM Data Science, along with the Machine Learning Specialization, might be a pretty good combo too. Or maybe if your goal is just to focus on data engineering, then you might want to consider taking the IBM Data Analyst and Data Engineering certifications together. Again, I want to emphasize that there's a ton of different ways to learn data science, but courses and certifications just happen to work well for me. The hard part still remains. Regardless of what path you choose, you will need to do the work, the hard work of filling in the knowledge gaps that you have. No two people are exactly the same, so you might grasp some concepts easier than others, and it's ultimately your responsibility to learn what you need to learn. This could mean a few more hours working on a specific module or watching a couple more YouTube videos for a specific topic, or even working on a few more projects for a specific concept. YouTube will probably work well for those of you who are very self-disciplined and can dig through the content to come up with your own study plan. Me personally, I found that paying for these courses and certifications were worth it for the most part just because I didn't really like going through all the content on the internet, understanding what was false and understanding what was true, understanding what methods better, understanding how to actually apply this, you know, trying to curate some application or project from scratch was pretty hard. So at the start, at least I needed some help getting started to push me forward and reduce the friction of getting started, which I think these courses and certifications come in pretty handy. To me, the return of investment was pretty significant just because I was able to get up and running pretty quickly learn the stuff that I needed to learn and apply that with projects afterwards. Plus at the time I knew what I didn't know so I was able to pick and choose what courses and models to take to fill in that knowledge gap. So instead of completing 100% of a course or certification, I focus on the content that I didn't already know to reduce overlap. I think if you can afford it, this option can save you a lot of time and dramatically reduce the risk that you would get if you committed to a formal education like a degree or a master's program. You can navigate the field through these courses to one, figure out if you actually like what you're doing and two, reduce the fluff or irrelevant content or courses that you'd be taking if you committed to like a four-year degree program or something similar. Plus, take it from me, you don't really get too deep into the field of data science with just an undergraduate degree. 
I also want to mention that learning data science and landing a data science job are two very different things. There's a lot more work that you have to put in if you want to land a job at the end, like resume stacking, interview prep, networking, and stuff like that. However, if you've done the work and learned what the job requires, the job search process will be much easier. Speaking of landing a job, if you're interested in a full roadmap of not only how to learn data science, but also how to land a data science job, do let me know down in the comment section below. If you found some value from this video, leave a like down below and consider subscribing. In the next few weeks, I'll be focusing more on content targeted towards landing an internship and resume tips. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below too. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.